Hello, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it is uh, March 2nd of 2019. It's just uh, 14 minutes past midnight. I see I forgot to, supposed to take my evening medicine at 6 p.m. And it's six hours later, so I'll have to take that here in a little bit. Um, I was just, uh, using Google Maps, and, uh, I saw that the maps have really been updated. Uh, I'll show you here in a minute why. But a few of the videos I made in the past, I called walking and talking videos, and that's where I went out with my camera and just walked around and, uh, had quite a few of you say you liked those videos and I like those kind of videos too when I see other people doing them and sometimes the videos like where somebody has a camera in their car but uh, because I like seeing the traffic you know seeing the people or when when I'm out when I was out walking and talking you know, you could see the, the shops, a little bit of shops and everything. And I think especially if you're uh, uh, perhaps in some other country or something or other, it's interesting to see, oh, look, they have this, they have that, whatever. And I've seen videos. Therefore, I was watching a video, and it was in some a small Italian town, and somebody just had a camera or a business up, and it was aimed, and there was like the local, I'm not going to say cathedral, but local church or, uh, you know, Catholic Church or whatever in the plaza, the square or something. That was, that's interesting. Because I thought I was going to do, uh, going to do a lazy thing. I'm going to sit and, well, let's see. I can't say sit and walk and talk. Sit and talk. That sounds an awful, I can't say that word. I'd be probably banned. Uh, so... But let me pull, I want to mention something. Uh, I got, I purchased this bag from uh, Amazon oh, back, I think a year or two years ago, a while back. When I flew out to Washington, D.C., and it's an inexpensive, it's an inexpensive bag off of, uh, did I say Walmart? Amazon. And this is one of the bags. Oh, this is the... I didn't hardly take anything when I went out there for two weeks. Uh, yeah, I did have a suitcase with me because it got... A, it had plastic inside it, divider, and what it meant. <laughs> All that plastic was shattered and broke, you know, that from uh, being going over the conveyor belt or something at the airport. But anyway, I took this bag, and I got two compliments. I don't get compliments often. And once when I was getting off the airplane in Washington, D.C., or somebody said, uh, and I was getting the bag, well, it was actually in my lap, and I kept it between my legs or whatever. But when I was uh, getting my bag and getting ready to leave, he said, oh, he said, are you a professional photographer? And I said, no. And he says, he says well, I thought, that. he says, that bag is really, and I said, yeah, it's a nice, nice bag. didn't cost very much and everything. Anyway, this bag gotten for, has gotten very little bit of use, and uh, you know, look at the uh, you know, this handle is, which doesn't matter. But anyway, I was talking to my daughter Hillary, and uh, actually, I don't want to ever. I should try not to ever mention anything to her, like whatever, but I mentioned to my bag, and I said, oh, it was my bag, and, and I had even received a couple compliments, and there was so the other, the other night she brought this over, and uh, she got this at uh, Windstar Cathed Cathedral, <laughs> Windstar uh, Gambling Casino, at the shop, I've seen the shop there that, and everything in that shop is, this is, she said this was genuine leather, 
and uh, I didn't ask how much it cost but it's really nice and uh, I've seen their stuff in that shop we've, when we've gone out there before to the casino and uh, the stuff in there is expensive I, you know more expensive than it's you know I think they get high quality stuff and then whatever that probably would sell for someplace else they probably double the price or something but uh, Hillary won a little jackpot of course she spends more than uh, everybody well everybody does one year in Kansas City Missouri I was working at Lee Summit Hospital midnight shift and I think I was working a four-day work week and uh, working midnights so and what I did uh, when I worked security and worked when I worked hospital security and uh, I mean I worked when I started out in life I worked as a welder and started out on the midnight shift I'd be falling asleep welding you know it is rough working the midnight shift not good for your health anything but so over the years but when I started working well in the very beginning I didn't but eventually I learned and what I did is on my the nights off I stayed up all night long so my working midnight shift I'd get off like six in the morning and I'd immediately go to bed and sleep until I woke up and then you know and uh so what I finally learned to do, and that was when on my nights off, I would stay up all night long. Of course, you don't have any relatives or friends or whatever that are staying up, you know, on midnight all night long. So I would, you know, I would clean the place. Back then I'd move the TV from room to room as I cleaned, except for the bathroom. I didn't put the TV in the bathroom when I cleaned the bathroom. But then I got, uh, when I worked at Lee Summit Hospital, I just uh, went to the casino every night. And uh, I, for an entire year, I worked for Lee Summit Hospital for one entire year. And I wrote down everything that I, you know, gambled, how much I took, how much I lost, or whatever, and then how much I won. <laughs> and I had some really nice nights, you know, I came home four or five hundred dollar you know hundred dollar bills come home with them but it, you know when I added everything up at the end of the year of course you know they they win you don't win you know but uh, so uh, how did I get on that subject I'm not sure but um, I had a reason to get on that. So what I'm going to do is, oh, what I noticed was this uh, street view here is really up to, they've updated it. And I'll show you one way I know. So, so this is going to be a, armchair check of the neighborhood over here by well I see I'm not down there far enough yet well I'm not even going to mention that so, this little shopping center down at the corner. This is the Electric Cowboy. And they have Wi Fi, by the way. And I don't get out much and do any much walking anymore. I'm totally exhausted all the time. And can barely stand up a lot of the time. And. My heart doctor or whatever, I see him once a year, and he says, uh, pacemaker's fine, everything's fine, you know. And my regular doctor, I, I don't know, you know, they, I think that I'm, I'm gonna have to, I have to take myself off 
<clears throat> one of these medications. I think it's when I started taking one of the medications. The problem is I, uh, I'm just not very observant about my own. You know, I think other people you would take start taking a new medication, and then if you were uh, several now, of course, if you took the medication and immediately you have, you know, diarrhea or vomiting or break out in a rash or you know, something you'd notice, but with something maybe that comes on gradually, I think I started taking one of these two medications that I, I'm taking more than two, but I suspect it's, uh, I think it's the uh, diabetes medication. But I don't know, you know, because I started, I don't know when it hit. I just know that a few years ago, you remember watching videos of me uh, out walking around through the neighborhood making videos. One during a snowstorm here in Dallas that didn't amount to hill. I was out walking around with my camera saying, oh man, these Texas drivers, they don't know what a storm is and a car's route here on this street, you know, Camp Boy Boulevard down here. They were, uh, in fact, it was right here at this corner right here. I was right here. I just walked down here, and I was right here on the sidewalk, and I was saying, these drivers here in Texas don't know how to drive. This isn't bad, and fell on my ass, and I kept the camera going. I had trouble, I did have trouble getting, some trouble getting up, but, uh, Anyway, back to the electric cowboy. This, uh, I'm not sure exactly. I've never been in to this place. It's, I live less than a block away. If I've never been in, I forget exactly what their nights are. There are some nights, they, this parking lot is filled up way over and people park across the street where they're not supposed to. There's signs up, I think, across the street, you know, whatever, and they fill up. Then sometimes there's not a lot of uh, cars here on certain nights. But I've walked, when I was walking by the uh, Wi-Fi, I'm not sure if I clicked on anything or did anything with my cell phone. And uh, then I used to get, I never went in, but because the Wi-Fi on my cell phone had picked up, I would get things saying, uh, I'm not sure what they said. If they had free drink, they wouldn't do. I think that's probably against the liquor control laws. I forget what it was. Come on, you know, it was, but it was an invitation to come. You know, hey, you haven't. Oh, it would say you haven't been here in a while. Well, I've, no, it was uh, when I moved here. This place here. Let's go over here. Now this loan place for a car loan place. You know. But when uh, I guess I guess Uber car didn't go through there, but it was a combination. It was what was it? Thai, Japanese, something like that combination. And I told my son and my grandson and everything. Oh, let's go eat there. Let's go. I think I did that for like a year. No, no, it's no good. It's no good or whatever. So finally I went down and they had <clears throat> all you could eat. Of course, they didn't do a lot of business. So they didn't. When they started, they opened and they started the thing. It didn't have a lot there. I mean, they had, you know, stuff spread out, but not a lot of uh, stuff. But as soon as I would, anyway, I'd go in and I'll take the all you can eat. And I'd have the place just about all to myself. And so I was doing that, got three days a week, four days a week. And I didn't, I just did it for a few weeks and was enjoying it. And bang, I went down there one day and there was a thing on the door that they were closed. And then the landlord the owner had put a thing. These people haven't paid their rent or whatever. And of course that place went out of, went out of business. Um, This barber shop, can I say uh, this barber shop is a black barber shop? 
I, I, it's, you know, it, it is. I've seen a, a white person or two in there before, but it's, it's a black barber shop. <clears throat> They've had some break-ins <clears throat> down here, and I see now that this, this shows me too that this thing is uh, recently updated because he put uh, this kind of sliding this one slided over the door or whatever put uh, but I'm not sure why anybody would break into a barber shop uh, when I moved to this area this place was actually the dance makers of Texas or whatever they had all of everything this entire area which is you know multiple shops you know one two I think about three shops or whatever they had that and they had people so I'd be walking down to Walgreens or uh, something by that and they'd be couples in there you know dancing and be the dance instructor and stuff then they moved out to a different uh, different location and uh, let's see is this the place no and this tattoo uh, shop moved in here. Laundromat's always uh, been there. This is this is new. Just fairly recently, it opened up. And these inexpensive strip malls. You see a lot of these beauty supply places. I think because I guess there's people out there buying. You know operating a little beauty place out of their garage or, you know, the husband or something, I guess is that sexist anyway. Uh, they have, somebody has a, a lady has, is that sexist? I don't know. And, uh, but I think the reason they have these is because uh, they can, there's, I looked in the window and the big containers and stuff of whatever they use uh, is pretty expensive and uh, this place here I, from the way it looks and I've been here eight years or whatever you know this uh, I think was a restaurant of some kind it's it's closed now this place here, when I moved here, was an inexpensive grocery store. And, uh, but we were sorry to see it go, but man, you had to watch their, uh, they'd have a lot of expired items in there. Because, and I think the reason was because there was, there was no more than two employees, one at the cash register and then, you know, one doing something, you know, and there just wasn't enough. And then I think sometimes I only saw like one person there. And, but there were several items that we bought down there that, you know, big things of, I forget where they were burrito. Oh, I know one thing was sausage, breakfast sausages or whatever, and a big, you know, stuff like that. There were several things we'd get, but an awful lot, but we were sorry to see them go. But then, uh, and the place was vacant for a long time, for a long time. And I think you, I think I even made a video. Yeah, I made a walking, talking video. One time going by and saying, ah, oh, I think somebody's going to be moving in here. And this Dollar Tree is, they're a Canadian corporation. And uh, they moved, their opening day was to be that day I told you about the uh, snow and that's when I fell on my ass down in the corner down there and that was there to be their day opening well the weather wasn't well that day was sort of bad for, for Fort Worth and uh, they didn't open well then the next day everything was fine and uh, they didn't open for their grand opening the next day was fine they didn't open for their grand opening then finally they opened up and I thought, what must, you know, I don't know where the company is in Canada, the headquarters is, but what, what must that company in Canada be thinking at here in Texas? You know, their new store didn't open 
because of snow or blizzard or whatever condition. They might have checked, you know, the weather channel or something. What in the hell's going on? They should be open, you know. And uh, they have it, everything in there is a dollar. Of course, there's some canned goods and stuff that there's nothing over a dollar. But then they have some, you know, like beans or something that are less than a dollar. So you don't you don't have to pay for a dollar for an item that's fifty cents or whatever. But nothing more than a dollar. And they have some frozen foods back in the back. And uh, they have some good they have some some good bargains. Uh, I don't have it. Well, it's over there. Well, let me get it. Hang on a second. Uh, uh, things like this. A buck. Uh, so. Um, so we're glad they're there, and they and that and they're doing. I think they're going to do okay. Uh, West Fort Worth is real near the what used to be Carswell's Air Base. I used to hear that years ago uh, when I was a kid on uh, the shortwave radio, whatever you know. Sky King, Sky King, Sky King. Authentication, you know, doing the SAC codes, launch code, well, not the launch codes, I hope, but doing that, you know. And then the base a few years ago, well, West Fort Worth was built up with shopping centers and a lot of businesses moved in, apartments were built, and then the air base, not closed, but went to being a joint reserve base with hardly any people there. I mean, they do have the Marines fly out of there. You may hear them occasionally when I'm doing a video, and then the Air Force has a reserve unit that flies out of there, does their stuff once a week or whatever, and the Navy, you know, and, uh, but, so, but, Used to be, whoops, why is, why are we not moving? Now this dollar store is closed. There was a small dot, and it, it wasn't that great. Well, I don't think they moved to a different location. Now, when I moved here and everything, people said, oh, great barbecue, and uh, best barbecue, and, and uh, I said, I am from Kansas City, Missouri. They have the best barbecue in the United States or whatever. Of course, everybody wherever you're from, I don't know, you, they say they, part of it is the sauce, I think. People get used to a certain, you know, certain kind of sauce. But actually, I've eaten here a few times, and it's good. And they do quite a bit of business, especially certain times. There's Sometimes you'll see the parking lot filled with police cars, and I think there's groups that like, oh, once I'm, or there, I've heard ham radio operators uh and I have radio operator on the repeater or whatever, say, where are we going to have lunch or whatever? And then sometimes they'll say, okay, let's have it at the Spring Creek Barbecue. Here's Walgreens. They, <clears throat> this is where I have my prescriptions refilled. And we go down there, or I don't do such, but Walgreens. Um. Now, after that place up there that I told you about that had the buffet and everything, and as soon as I started using it, uh, they closed. <laughs> this was an Arby's. 
So I came down here and they weren't doing a bunch of business either. And so I, I became like a, uh, a good customer of theirs. And uh, the manager, I talked to the manager had come over occasionally and talked to me, a young guy, a real young guy. And he had just, he had been manager or assistant manager at another Arby's and he had moved over here. Yeah, I think you can see what's happening. You know, he moved over here to be manager over here. And then this place shut up and closed up almost right away. Of course, I'm sure they moved him someplace else. But uh, not long ago, maybe a month or so, uh, I noticed this sign here. And I think it says, oh, it says chick and cow. That's a W. Okay. I thought it said chick and cow. Let me write that down so I can do a search for chick and cow. And then it says express Mexican food underneath. Okay, I'll check this out. Chicken. Chick and cow. That makes sense. In fact, I think it shows a chicken and a cow, I believe, now that I zoomed in. Okay, let's do that now. Let's see if there are a franchise. Let's see. Oops. Yeah, that's it. What's this warning division by zero and come on what is this gonna crash? Let's go to official site, okay. Oh that's chicken cat and chow. Catering, chicken cow. Okay, let's go here. Sounds like it's gonna crash because underneath it says warning division by zero. Nope. Okay. Oh man, okay, chicken tap okay. They even have beer ooh. Stop! Two, somebody tell these people to need to bake. Okay, I'm getting. <sighs> well, let me copy this and send it to my family here. Wonder if they're open yet. That doesn't look appealing. That particular. Maybe I can just put this thing up here and stop it. Okay. Nachos. It doesn't really look that good. Burrito. Okay. My God. Somebody. T okay. Okay. That doesn't look good. I don't drink. Okay. Well, that that's a salad. That looks pretty good. Okay, chick and chow salad. Okay, I had to hit the stop button there. Nachos does not look that good. Of course, you can't really go by. Burrito, whoops, stop, God. Baked potato, okay, stop. Do they not have anybody who actually goes to their own site? Whoops. I mouse slipped off and I hit the... Okay, I want to see the baked potato. Maybe I can go back. No, I can't. Chicken cow, are you... Okay, well, shit, that'll close it. Okay. Well, let's go to, f that's not, okay. 
Lordy, Lordy. Coming soon. They should already be open by now. Unless they ran out of money or something happened. I hope they do okay because that doesn't seem to be a good spot. You know, it seems like... Uh, well, actually, it's a good spot if people, I guess, want... Oh, I'm back at the beginning. Well, maybe that's enough. I was going to show you the rest of the neighborhood and fit in on all the gossip. Chicken cow. Okay. Um, let's pull up here. Should I use Chrome? No, I'm not going to use Chrome. Okay, I'll use Chrome. Here we go. Let's see what's going on in the world. Hopefully, India and Pakistan have kissed and made up. Let's see. Uh, News found at South Carolina Boeing plant. You know, you don't know my history of fighting racism, actually. Uh, I mean, I, uh, at big time I worked at, well, Trinity Lutheran Hospital was one place that was racist, and the director of security, my boss, was racist. And uh, I, I went for years, toe to toe with him, and fought racism in the de in the in the department and everything else. And later, I worked at another hospital, and the director of security there was extremely racist, and uh, didn't go toe to toe with him very much because he wouldn't. Uh, he wouldn't. You know, he really wouldn't deal with me. You know, at Trinity Lutheran Hospital, I never wanted to be a supervisor, but I ended up becoming second shift supervisor for years, and I went to the day shift. I was day shift supervisor. Uh, when the lieutenant had a heart attack, for, I was for three months, I was supervisor over all three shifts. He actually had a couple attacks, so, but the longest was three months that he was out. Then whenever the director of security at the hospital was going to be off for some reason, uh, he'd have me be in charge over the lieutenant, which pissed the lieutenant off. I had nothing to do with it. I didn't want it. I didn't want to be supervisor ever. They had to. He had to beg me to be, you know. But in that capacity, I, you know, fought the racism in the department or whatever. And, uh, but I think, you know, there was a big headline on CNN like last week at some grade school or whatever, there was Nazi graffiti, you know, written on the parking lot or whatever, the way kids draw the hopscotch thing for jumping or whatever. And, you know, turns out it was, I think, a 12-year-old girl who did it. And, you know, I mean, that shouldn't make CNN the headline news. And a noose was found in a plant, you know, workers. I used to be a, I used to be a welder, a boilermaker. I worked, well, I didn't see any, I didn't deal with any races. I didn't have any, well, except once I had a guy telling me uh, we were underneath a railroad car. Welding, he was on one side, I was on the other, underneath a coal hauler, welding overhead. And then brake came or whatever, and uh, he said, oh, well, you may not, and I didn't know the guy, I mean, it just we just happened to end up underneath the thing, and he said, well, I may not be here tomorrow, or whatever, I, I used to be a, a Kansas City, Kansas police officer, and uh, then he said, yeah, and, he used the N-word and uh, stuff like that. And he said, yeah, we, 
we'd bring those, you know, using the N-word, and uh, they would fall down the steps in the police station, everything. He says, I, I got fired and everything, but he says, in the morning I've, I've got an appointment to go talk to the chief, and uh, I think he's going to reinstate me and bring me back on the force. So if you don't see me, you know, you'll know I got hired back on the Kansas City, Kansas, and so I'm, I didn't know Kansas City, Kansas then. Actually, I was working in Kansas City, Kansas. That was right across the bridge. Darby Corporation for... But, uh, so I'm thinking to myself, they're not going to, they're not, you're not going to get hired back in. I don't know exactly, I was thinking, I don't know why exactly you were fired. I got an idea, but you're not going to get hired in. I didn't see him the next day. And then I later, you know, learned about the Kansas City, Kansas, and it didn't surprise me uh, one bit. In fact, he probably is one of the most, you know, I was, there was, anyway. But that, so far as the welding and stuff, and I worked for a whole bunch of different companies, worked for the post office for a while, uh, had my own patrol service for a while. We had our own tropical fish shop for, for, for four years and stuff. So I had a lot of experience. I, I didn't run into racism really until I went into hospital security. And because on the other security that I did a little bit of, and I did that part time, and then for a while I just did it for a few months, I was doing it strictly contract security. And there, you know, they send you out to a factory or a warehouse or office building or something. And if you're contract security, you're the, you know, you're the only person there. So there's nobody to talk to, you don't, you know, but I never saw any nooses or, but I think, you know, I'm not sure exactly what I'm saying. I mean, it just, I'm, you know, yeah, there are stupid people and they're going to do stuff and there's a time to make a big issue of it and there's a time to, if you're in a position, you know, fix the problem, which I did when I was in the position. I fixed the problem. Of course, as soon as I moved on from that position, I think it probably went back to the bad times. Trump is asking China to lift the farm tariffs. He put tariffs on China China threatened, okay, we're going to do such and such, and now they've done it, and American farmers are hurting, and American farmers were some of the biggest, apparently, Iowa. Iowa's a nice state with people up there with some, still have some family farms or whatever, but my God, the, voter, the voters up there. Uh, Some Lyft drivers are going to get $10,000 in bonuses. TV and film star, I don't know who she is. Addicted parrots raid a poppy farm. Uh, well, we're not at, well, Pakistan and India are not at war, at least today. I guess that's it. If you liked this tour using Google Maps or whatever they call it, and let me know and I'll show you the neighborhood some more as I sit here in my cell, I mean my bedroom. Uh, thank you very much for watching.